Hey YouTube, so I watched uh, Milrick 77s video where he was talking about um, <coughs> and uh, he also talked about um, butt welding and he'd rather butt weld than flange weld because you know something that made sense when I was watching it. He, he didn't like the way a flange weld would go and a butt weld just seemed simpler uh, and um, less metal work afterwards and I must say after my experience with this even though it was my first go at it um, it seemed like I mean I didn't have a lot of clamps pinching the metal together so as I was welding I guess this was warping or this was warping or both and I had more of a gap between this piece of metal and this piece of metal at the flange. So basically what I was doing was filling this huge valley with weld. I mean all this metal you see here is weld wire. And the reason why it's so close to the profile here, that's not super fabulous work on my, on my part. The back of this got pushed out and I filled the gap with weld which is a waste and isn't really teaching me how to weld, it's teaching me how to how to fix fuck up and I'd rather just not fuck up to begin with. So, experiment one with flange weld right there. And this was the butt weld and you know it's welded but I only tacked it so I wasn't really trying to tackle this in a constructive way. I was putting most of my attention on the flange weld. So, uh, watching Milgrick's video and Beethoven 03, I think it is, or Beethoven, really. He had done a uh, fabrication of butt weld clamp video. And I had these because... Anthony had uh, talked them up and how to showed a video how to use them. So I'm just going to try this and I'm going to focus on a butt weld. I know people have suggested that I do beads on thicker metal and I do have thicker metal over here. I had a, a pull out couch, a sleeper sofa that I destroyed and I cut all the the width-wise material out of it. So some of this, it's like an eighth of an inch thick. So, or yeah, about an eighth of an inch thick. Some of it's thicker. Um, I am gonna do a thicker weld practice round. I'm gonna make myself a little rolly seat to sit on for when I'm doing body work and maybe the welding. Um, but I'm going to weld casters on the bottom and weld the frame out of the out of the bed frame and I'm going to put this seat on it so this seat went to like a handicap scooter thing so the top folds down and it's overly luxurious and maybe having the having the back not the top having a back there may invite me to fall on my ass but I can just take it off, right? So anyway, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to practice welding this uh, with gas. And I left this piece of tape on there. This tape marked my line that I used my cutoff wheel. And this is the edge that was uh, right up against the cut. So. I was able to cut with the cutter right next to the paper, the paper tape. You can see little scorch marks on the back there. And I didn't cut into the tape. So getting better at following a tape line, that is good. So if nothing else today, I demonstrated to myself that I can do that. So anyway, I, it's, I don't think I'm going to do action shots. I'll show you what I got afterwards. Just because I'm at five minutes now on the recording.
All right, so don't need butt clamp. Oh, by the way, when I was putting on this butt clamp, and I suppose this would be true of the Betovine 03 clamp, um, when I was tightening it up, the, um, what did I do? Did I weld it? Uh, I did something. Yeah, I think I, I welded it. Nice. Okay, but anyway, when I was tightening this, the uh, bolt, and consequently that tab that goes through the, the gap, turned and was acting like a pry bar to um, split this seam. So I had to carefully line it up as I was tightening it and holding it and blah blah blah. Alright, so how did I end up? I did a couple initial tacks that uh, didn't bridge the gap because I was too tentative and didn't hold the trigger long enough. Okay, Then I went back and held it on for longer and I bridged all the gaps. Uh, these welds still feel a little high so I might have had too high a wire speed or not enough heat, right? So, um, looking at it this way, I think I had enough heat. Focus on that. So I think I had enough heat. And, you know, looking at the other side, I had... Uh, Decent penetration. You can see exactly where I held the trigger longer. It was all penetrating through. But if you look in the seam there, there isn't a whole lot of material or, well, not a whole lot of material in the gap on this side. I think I had, you know, have some right in the middle there. Um, but not a whole lot filling the gap. So, uh, once again, this was uh, gas and the .024 wire. So, I think my variable that I'm trying to focus in on now is how close I have the, uh, the torch tip. It's not really a torch, but I guess that's what it's called. So, I did try to stay close. But I did find that when I stopped welding, I would have like an inch or an inch and a quarter of wire. <laughs> so I, looking through the, uh, the helmet, and I do have an auto darkening helmet, awesome technology by the way. Uh, looking through the helmet, I could see the puddle. I could see what I was doing with the puddle, but I, was, I couldn't see how far away my welding tip was. So I think that's the variable that I'm working on now. Um, would I be happy with this work on the car? No, not yet. I know that the panel would stay on there, but I'm not happy with the spot where I blew through, right? Because I don't, I don't want that going on in the quarter. I don't mind this big blob of crap bridging the gap that I have to grind down because this blob still goes all the way through. That's the blob that was showing through on the other side in the gap. So, more of those, I don't mind. Shit like that, that's not good. So, um, I mean this whole, none of this is going to get water splash from the inside. So, you know, even if I did do this on the, on the quarter, it's not going to be a complete disaster because I can go over that with Duraglass and it'll be sealed basically against the weather. Unless I have weather in the trunk and then, you know, I'll probably need therapy for that. So anyway, uh, practicing. I'm going to grind this shit down and see if I can fill in again. So, but I'm not going to post that on today's video because it's, it's already getting too long. So. Still practicing, learning, and learning, and learning, and learning. So, quick update. And you'll see I, I do have the panel more horizontal, as uh, was suggested to me. So I did experiment with uh, the heat and the, uh, 
uh, distance from the panel and I kept the wire speed constant. So you can see, let's see if I can handle this, yep. I blew through, so after I did that, I turned the heat down and then I got some decent puddles, granted not on the seam, you know, a decent puddle there, not on the seam, not on the seam, but I got, I, and I found out when I was doing that, the wire was, the wire speed was a little fast. So I compensated by getting the, uh, concentrating and keeping the torch head closer. And, uh, actually I, I bridged the gap pretty well in a couple spots. So I'm getting there. No, I didn't do the spoon on the back. Uh, I won't always have that option here. I'm not going to be able to get behind the panel here. And definitely not down there. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, get feedback from what I'm doing to change my behavior so that I, I get a better weld. So uh, the big thing that I was doing in my behavior that changed was keeping the torch tip closer to the work. Um, and when I did that, I got more of the sizzling bacon sound toward the end when I was, I was running out of room to experiment here. So keeping that torch tip close and uh, also purging the, uh, the gas line, I would hold the trigger down for the, you know, the gas to run for a few seconds and then I would try welding and I got a sizzling bacon with that sound also. So I'm zeroing in on it, getting there. I'm really glad that I've got the opportunity to practice with this thing rather than trying to work it out on that. Holy crap. I'd have like Duraglass four inches thick to compensate for my welding learning. So it's going well, going slowly. I didn't expect it to go fast, but I'm getting there and keeping all the feedback from my uh, YouTube Garage Gang brothers in mind. So it's working out, working out. Like I said, you know, the spoon is a good idea behind there. That's probably exactly what I need here, but I won't have that option there. So I'm aiming to get this part right. So I got to learn how to do that kind of welding. So it's all right. I'm practicing, trying to practice a lot.